Hi, English 10. Um, we're going to talk about this poem on page eight in your poetry packet called The Analysis of Baseball. And the reason that I'm going to talk about this poem is because it has a lot of sound devices in it. Um, it rhymes, even though it doesn't follow a specific rhyme scheme. It has alliteration. It has onomatopoeia. And then it also has those two new words, assonance and consonance. And so we're going to talk about all of that in this poem. I'm going to read it out loud first. Um, I hope that you like it. I, I'm not a huge uh, sports fan, but I do really like this poem. I think that it's a lot of fun to read. Um, so The Analysis of Baseball by May Swenson. It's about the ball, the bat, and the mitt. Ball hits bat, or it hits mitt. Bat doesn't hit ball, bat meets it. All, Ball bounces off bat, flies air, or thuds ground, dud, or it fits mitt. Bat waits for ball to mate. Ball hates to take bat's bait. Ball flirts, bat's late, don't keep the date. Ball goes in, thwack, to mitt, and goes out, thwack, back to mitt. Ball fits mitt, but not all the time. Sometimes ball gets hit pow when bat meets it and sails to a place where mitt has to quit in disgrace. That's about the bases loaded, about 40,000 fans exploded. It's about the ball, the bat, the mitt, the bases, and the fans. It's done on a diamond, and for fun, it's about home, and it's about run. Okay. So hopefully you started to notice some of those examples. You can certainly tell that this poem has a specific rhythm to it, and it is largely because of all of the assonance and consonants and that little bit of rhyme in the poem as well. All the T sounds that get repeated throughout the poem, that consonants, it really runs throughout the entire poem, and it kind of um, uh, demands to be read in a certain way, I guess. So I'm going to talk about this uh, very first sentence here. It's about the ball, the bat, and the mitt. And we're going to talk about consonants in this sentence. So consonants, if you remember from your poetry terms, is the repetition of consonant sounds in uh, several words that are fairly close together. So it's about the ball, the bat, and the mitt. I have a T and its, a T and about, a T and bat, and a T and mitt. And all of these T's are like actual t, -t T's, right? Sometimes we say D when a T is written there, but these don't sound that way. They, they definitely sound like T's. So <clears throat> if I was going to identify this um, as an example on my uh, slideshow, I would need to make sure that I bolded each of these T's in order to show that they are examples of consonants. So I'm going to do that just right now. I'm not going to do this throughout the entire poem. I'm just going to do it to this one sentence. And I do both T's and mitt because it is the double T that makes the sound Okay, so that's consonants. Now, if I get to the next sentence, you should see consonants in this sentence too. It says, ball hits mitt or it, I'm sorry, ball hits bat or it hits mitt. So again, we have the repetition of the T sounds, but the reason that I'm not going to bold all of these is I want to show you how this is also an example now of assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in a word. So I have ball hits bat or it hits mitt. I have these soft I sounds, this I sound in hits. So I'm going to bold. Actually, I'm going to change it up here a little bit. I'm going to italicize these so that you can, I know it won't be super apparent, but... <clears throat> so hits, it, hits again, and then mit. I am italicizing the I in the, these four words because this is an example of assonance. 
okay? Um, we can see assonance. I'm going to talk about this just a little bit more um, down here where it says bat waits for ball to mate. The AI in waits makes the same sound as this same or as this plain A in mate, okay? But it does not make the same sound as the A in bat or the A in ball. So if I'm identifying this as assonance, I'm going to identify the AI in weights and the A in mate as the example of assonance. And I'm going to make sure that I don't italicize bat, the A in bat or the A in ball, just because it's the same letter. I'm not looking for the letter. I'm looking for the sound. And that's why it's so important to read poems out loud so you can actually hear the sound that the words make. Um, if I want to go even further, hates, take, and bait all make the same sound as weights and mate. And again, oops, it's just an A in hates and just an A in take, but then in bait we have the AI <clears throat> that makes the same sound as, as the, the A's in those other words that we've already started to italicize. Okay. Gosh, that looks weird. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, alliteration, since we're on the repetition of sounds and words. So alliteration um, is kind of like a more specialized version of consonants and assonants. Alliteration can be either a vowel or a consonant, but the trick with alliteration is it has to be the sound at the beginning of the word. Okay, so I'm going to look at my notes here first and I'm going to look here where it says ball bounces off bat. So ball bounces and bat all start with that b sound, the sound that the b makes. And so this is an example of alliteration. The end of the poem here has some alliteration too. It's done on a diamond. Um, I just feel like that's really uh, intentional to use done and diamond in the same sentence. That alliteration, it, it aids us in reading the poem. It aids the um, rhythm of the poem. So you can probably find other examples of alliteration in this uh, poem, but we're just going to stick to those two. Okay. Last two that we have to talk about are rhyme and onomatopoeia. So we'll talk about onomatopoeia first. This poem's so easy because on, the onomatopoeias, four of the five of them that I've been able to find, there might be more, are uh, in parentheses. So you have pow, you have dud, and you have thwack and thwack, both of those, same word, but all three of those are onomatopoeias. The only other one that I see, and I'm not going to do anything to this one, I'll just highlight it here for, for you to see um, while I'm talking about it, is thuds. Thuds is definitely an onomatopoeia. Um, <clears throat> so we've got some onomatopoeia in this poem as well. And then rhyme is the very last thing we're going to talk about. This poem does not have a rhyme scheme, but it does have some rhyme. So I'm going to read the second stanza here and see if you can find the rhyme. Bat waits for ball to mate. Ball hates to take bat's bait. Ball flirts. Bat's late. Don't keep the date. Ball goes in thwack to mitt and goes out thwack back to mitt. <clears throat> so we've got mate. Uh, what can I do to this? and bait rhymed together. And then we had late and date. And we have, one, I guess one thing to point out about this and why we wouldn't call this rhyme scheme is it's not consistent throughout the poem. This part doesn't rhyme. It just is more repetition. Um, 
And the other thing is, is that mate is at the end of a line, but then bait is in the middle of this line. Late is in the middle of this line, and then date is at the end of this line. So it's definitely not a rhyme scheme. It's just a, not even a coincidence, but it's just a fact that some of the rhyme, or the words rhyme in this poem. Um, this last little part of the third stanza, that's about the bases loaded, about 40,000 fans exploded. Obviously, that's rhyme as well. And then it's done on a diamond for fun. It's about home and it's about run. Obviously, that's rhyming too. So hopefully you learned a little bit. Hopefully assonance and consonants will be a little bit easier for you after this video. Um, please make sure that you